If you're currently thinking which electric car charger to buy, because you might have recently bought a new car, and you think that it doesn't really matter, well, today I'm gonna to tell you why it does, because tariffs like Octopus Intelligent and Ovo Anytime need usually the car or the charger to support it. And I'm gonna tell you why having the charger support is more important as we see the first API car drop intelligent support. We're gonna be talking who that manufacturer is, what it actually means for that manufacturer going forward, and why I don't think they'll be the first car manufacturer to unsupport a already supported deal like Octopus Intelligent. Now, Ovo Anytime is a deal that controls the charger or the car via the API. It does this by seeing when the car's plugged in, and when that car's plugged in and charging, Ovo will allocate any of that kilowatt hours going into just the car, not the house, going into just the car for being cheap rate electricity. Now, what I mean by this is that you'll pay your normal standard rate for all your other time on Ovo, and this is a bolt-on, which allows the car to charge at a cheaper rate than your standard time. Now, Octopus Intelligent works a little bit differently. They guarantee you six hours of cheap 7.5 electricity from half 11 to half five every single night for the house and the car, if you choose to plug the both in. But what will happen is if you plug the car in, the car might not charge at all during those hours, or it might charge during some of those hours, but it can also charge outside of those hours, and the house and the car will get cheaper rate electricity. Now, Octopus do this, the same as Ovo, by controlling the charger or the car. Now, if you're not an Octopus Energy customer, go to evnick.com forward slash energy, where there's a link to sign up to Octopus Energy, and you get to split a hundred pound with me when you sign up. Now, in the past, I've done a video top right, check that out, about how I thought that picking the charger over the API car was very important because I think long-term API cars won't be fully supported. And this got some heated comments, obviously from people with API cars, but now we've actually seen my predictions actually come true. Now, Octopus have been emailing the affected branded customers, which we'll mention in a minute, saying that unfortunately due to a change in terms of conditions by this brand, that third parties are unable to control the charge schedule of the cars to turn them off and on depending on certain times. Now, this is exactly how Octopus Intelligent works. It needs to control the charge times rather than just keep them as set hours. This is how Octopus Intelligent gets the cheaper 7.5p and the longer hours over go. It's because it's more intelligent. It works to balance the grid depending on actual grid demand. Now, they've emailed these affected customers and told them that temporarily they're going to be moved to Octopus Go, which is just the fixed rate hours, but it's also a slightly higher off-peak charge. So the affected brand is Ford, and it's obviously going to affect Ford Mustang customers in particular. Now, I'll get down to Ford's official response in a minute. We'll talk about if it's Ford's fault, Octopus's fault, and what actually Ford will be doing to it, because it's mentioned in the official response from Ford. Now, why have they done it, and what's happened? Well, what's more than likely happened, Ford is a large OEM. They've obviously had a change in terms of conditions over in the States, which has affected the whole wide world. Unfortunately for Ford UK, they obviously didn't have any control over what this change was, and this change in terms of conditions blocked out Octopus Energy customers. Ford probably first found out about it when their customers and Octopus were emailing each other, and then they were getting a barrage of customer complaints about this issue, which Ford UK have obviously wanted to address separately, and as you'll see from the statement, want to fix for Ford customers because as I mentioned, it's not great, but there is a couple of reasons why this might actually happen again. So it's worth really considering what charger you buy now. We're aware that some Mustang E customers are experiencing issues with the integration of Ford Pass. With the intelligent Octopus tariff, Ford is working closely with Octopus to provide a solution. And we understand that this is frustrating for our customers. We expect to resolve this in early next year. In the meantime, Octopus is emailing affected customers to request further information in order to connect them and ensure their Ford Pass access is unrestricted. If a customer requires assistance with this process, they can contact Ford through Ford Pass in the account help section or 0127725. 745. So as you can see from that statement, Ford obviously looking to fix it. Early next year isn't exactly a time scale that I thought was a decent time scale for something that is basically a terms of condition change. So why have Ford blocked third party access and what's the whole sort of situation around it? Now, first we need to understand what an API is. Now it's quite a complicated thing. So let me just basically explain how it is very, very simply. An API 
basically delivers information from one computer process to another computer process, so from one website to another website. Think of it as a form of internal email for computers. They're talking, but it's a two-way communication. Probably think of it more as a telephone call or a uh, instant messaging service where they're constantly repeating pieces of information back to each other and forward and backwards. This requires Octopus uh, sending information to Ford and then Ford sending information back to Octopus so that they know that the information sent has been received and so on and so on. This constant talking forward and backwards is very, very expensive for a manufacturer to support for, say, Octopus who may be sending thousands of thousands of requests per day, maybe per hour for different sets of cars of customers. All these requests means that Ford's web server is constantly being bombarded by traffic and traffic on the internet is not free. Now obviously the server cost from the traffic from Ford might be considered a small cost for Ford to pay, but why should Ford pick up the bill and not Octopus? At the end of the day, it's benefiting you, the customer, and Octopus, and we'll get around some solutions that Ford and Octopus could do around this, but there's also other costs involved for Ford, which aren't that minuscule, which is the data cost to your car, because not only are they pushing information to the Ford server, that Ford server then has to push that to your physical car, and that's usually done with a SIM card or data SIM within your car, which Ford are also paying for, and that they're also paying for that two-way data from your car, for your car to say, I've got the new charge information, and the car to say I'm now charging or I've stopped charging. All these costs are mounting on Ford's side and they've only sold the car once and you might be the second, third or fourth owner and never physically given your money directly to Ford. So in a minute, I'm gonna talk about the OEM I think might be next after Ford, who possibly will do this very, very soon. And it's a very big brand, so you might wanna stick around to find out who that is. But let's talk about what the OEMs could do to kind of factor out this problem. One, they could charge Octopus for third-party access to access the API, and Octopus could have an ongoing cost. They could spread this into your energy tariff somehow for Octopus intelligent signups and basically swallow some of that cost. Another way, Ford could offer you a premium online package for API access like this, so you get the basic package, but if you want third-party access tokens to it, you have to pay for that third-party access on a monthly basis. Both these are likely going to be considered by all manufacturers and OEMs in the future. Now, Octopus Intelligent does have some other issues for battery and solar customers, which we'll get to in a minute. So who do I think is the next car brand to block Octopus Intelligent access? Well, it's gonna be the company that used to have a branded deal with Octopus themselves, and that is Tesla. Tesla used to have a Tesla plan with Octopus Energy for Tesla car owners and Tesla Powerwall owners to get cheaper rate electricity. What I think's likely gonna happen is Tesla are pulled out of the Octopus deal and now have started their own energy company called Tesla Energy. They've started been recruiting people quite heavily this year, but they haven't launched any public tariffs yet. I think what will likely happen is we'll see Octopus Intelligence support pulled for API cars on Tesla for people who are not on the £10 a month premium package. If you're on that premium package, you're likely to be protected and that's how Octopus will get around this looking like a fair deal. Premium API access for third parties will be on a £10 a month deal, but if you're, an, if you're with a Tesla Energy Plan deal, you'll get the third party access and some premium features thrown in for joining their energy deal. I think this is how Tesla will package their energy deal. I wanna know what you think down below in the comments. Do you think this would make you move to the Tesla energy plan or would it annoy you more that Tesla are doing stuff like this? If you also wanna know how Octopus Intelligent doesn't get along very well with solar and batteries, then check out this video here.